Yeah, the next speaker is Tasnim Mohammad. Uh, he will talking about uh, he will talk about assessing the reliability of Bitrigo area scoring index with the digital images of Bitrigo. Uh, please. Sorry, everyone, for the technical difficulty, but I'm very happy to be with you all this morning. Here are my disclosures, and the study was sponsored by Pfizer. So this is a really exciting time in vitiligo where we have a lot of new cl clinical trials underway looking at novel therapeutics, but it's really important for us to have good instruments to be able to measure outcomes. So we just heard a great talk um, about the VASI, the VES, and we also have the facial VASI as well. These are validated and reliable, but they can take a lot of time to perform and you have to have some experience with the, the instruments. So one proposed solution is actually using scoring based on digital images, but unfortunately the reliability and accuracy of this is unknown. So what we wanted to do was to determine the inter and intra rater variability of FASI based on digital images in people with vitiligo. And we also wanted to propose a method to determine accuracy of that rating to determine if raters require retraining. So we had 10 patients with vitiligo who were recruited and standardized photography was performed using existing guidelines. And we also had 12 raters with varying experience levels. The photos were all compiled and scaled. And then prior to the VASI scoring, all of the raters received a standardized VASI training and were given a scoring sheet to use. The total body VASI was then scored for all 10 patients and then this was repeated one week later. To measure reliability, we use intra-class uh, intra correlation coefficients, and to look at accuracy, we used ImageJ software to calculate um, the VASI and then compare that to rater scores. And our ICC interpretation is shown here, where 0.75 was considered a cutoff between moderate to good reliability. Um, as we all know, the VASI is performed by taking, you know, um, a hand unit, which is representative of 1% BSA, and then multiplying that by residual depigmentation. But we also have other tools that are available to us now, such as the fingertip unit, which is representative of 0.03% BSA. And you can also consider using a three-finger unit, which would then be representative of 0.27% BSA. And this is useful because sometimes patients will have lesions that are very small or are more scattered on the body where using a hand unit just isn't practical. So this is an example of uh, what we did. Every photo had a small marker to help with scaling the images. And then when you were looking at the images, the hand units and the fingertip units or the three finger units could actually be moved and manipulated to, um, to help aiding the scoring. So there were two ways to kind of approach um, scoring. So you could take this fingertip unit, move it to the depigmented area and say, okay, well, in this area, we have one fingertip unit and it's approximately 75% depigmented and then assess all of these other smaller satellite lesions separately. The other thing you could do would be to take these smaller satellite lesions and just kind of mentally move them with, into that fingertip unit to say, okay, in this knee, we have approximately one fingertip unit that's completely depigmented. Then this was, this data was inputted into this VASI scoring sheet where you could use um, the number of units, you could pick your unit type, so we had hand units, fingertip units, and three finger units, and then pick the degree of depigmentation. And then this was does, done in an Excel spreadsheet with formulas, so um, it was very easy to calculate the lesional VASI as well as the total VASI, and it was all automated to reduce error. So what we found was that there was good intra-rater reliability in both rounds with an ICC of about 0.83 to 0.84. And this was consistent with the previously published study by Mary et al, where they had an ICC of 0.85 and that was considered to be excellent. Um, the interpretation scale used in both studies was slightly different. The other difference was that in the Merhi et al. study, they used the photo finder system, which is a bit more of a sophisticated technology that can be quite costly. Whereas in our study, we use just a, a standardized cross-polarized photography, which is much more accessible. When we broke things down by experience category, 
Um, most categories had good reliability with only one showing moderate reliability. However, if you look at the ICC score, it was 0.744 with the cutoff being 0.75 between moderate and good. So very, very close. When we looked at intra-rater reliability, it was excellent to good in all raters. The next thing we did was determine accuracy. So you can see here that this image J uh, processing technology, which is available through the NIH, it enhanced the contrast between pigmented and depigmented skin, which you could then use to calculate the total depigmented area. What we found was that everyone had good to excellent reliability when compared to the image J analysis, except for these two raters. And so what we propose is using an ICC threshold of 0.75 to determine the need for repeat training. So in conclusion, we do need good methodologies to ensure that when we measure outcomes, we're doing it with accuracy and consistency. And the TFOSI um, from Scale Digital Photos had good to excellent reliability for the assessment of vitiligo, showing that this could be a very useful tool in clinical trials. So ideally, the way you would want to implement this is if you have a study that's being performed, you would want all of the raters to receive some standardized FASI scoring, which may improve reproducibility when you have um, raters of different experience levels. So you would go through training, and then you would have a standardized set of images that all of the raters would score. And then you would compare those scores to a gold standard. So in our study, we used image J software processing, but you could also compare to a gold standard of an expert rater. And then we propose using that 0.75 ICC as a threshold to determine the need for retraining. So that way, if someone does need a little bit um, you know, more time with the VASI needs to retrain, that can all be done before the study is initiated. So you feel confident in rater um, ability. And the goal is to improve rater agreement, which is especially important moving forward when we are doing multi-center clinical trials. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who is involved in this study, particularly um, Dr. Hamzavi and Dr. Indermit Kohli, as well as the Pfizer team, and thank you all for your attention. Uh, thank you for your great talk. Uh, I think that interrate and interrater agreement of facial BASI uh, would be better than total BASI. Uh, do you have any chance to assess the reliability of facial BASI? Yeah, so as part of the study, we did um, facial BASI, but we're going to report that separately. Uh, any case, yeah. Amit? One question. Do you, have any, do you have a recommendation above which you should not use the fingertip unit? Like, isn't it cumbersome? If 5% of your body is covered with vitiligo and you're using fingertips, yeah, what's your recommendation? Definitely. So I think the fingertip unit is um, more useful for smaller lesions or if you have multiple small lesions that are more widespread, where instead of trying to take a hand unit and say like, okay, well, you have this hand unit, but maybe like two little fingertips are involved in that hand unit, and how do you quantify that? You could just say, okay, well, there's two fingertip units involved in this body site. So, so I think... So you're recommending the raider go over the human body and say, use your fingertip, use your index finger, use your hand. Yeah, but, so but, then, using... but then that's his hand. What about the patient's hand? What if the patient's a child? What, then are you going to make a template? Right. So the way we've been using this in clinical practice is we actually, when a, a patient comes in, we'll take um, a transparency, measure their hand, measure a fingertip, or measure a thumb unit, right. and then we'll use that to, to do the score. Go around the body. And then yeah. when you're doing on an image, is you use that little clip, that little cutout. That exactly, you're, that which you're has doing. been scaled to size. So that was, has been scaled to size using the patient's hand and their fingertip units and three finger units. And that's going to be available from the whole, the whole world? Like any, you can do it in India, Thailand, Peru, so, anywhere? Or so how, is that complicated? Goal. That's the goal because uh, the software that was used was ImageJ, which is widely available. Um, it's not costly. The cameras right. that we used was just a standardized, uh, like, Canon cross-polarized camera. So it is a little bit more accessible um, to use than, you know, the photo finder system. And you'll have a training program on how to do that because your publication didn't tell us how to do that. The one you did with Dr. Bay and colleagues, it did not tell the, uh, the reader how to practically do this with image J, et cetera. So what I'm hoping for is that you'll have a whole module 
And so if you're in Lima, Peru, you can just, you know, say, okay, here's Henry Ford's recommendation, here's how to cut it, here's how you do your fingertip, and now you can start doing it on images. Yep, I think that's, that's definitely something that's going to be coming. And just not to minimize what you are saying, but I think that we always forgot that what is important is not what you are measuring with one hand or another hand. What is important is the delta between your first measurement and your last measurement. <laughs> And even if I take my own hand and I do it, do it at the beginning and at the end, it's my own hand. The delta will be the same. And this is the most important thing. Sorry. <clears throat> this is the most important thing. Is that the person who did the first uh, evaluation be the person who will do the other evaluation. This is the most important thing. Um, thank you, Amit, for setting this up because we have the training program on the GVF website, so Patrick Dawkins can let you know when that's going to be released, but I recorded it and we're just waiting for, I think, the best training. Um, and I think to Khalas Azadeen's point, it really has to be a consistency. The transparency will take care of that, but it is the delta. The VASI was designed to look at an intervention, so I think that's... Anywhere like we need more quantitative data like for that clinical trial where small changes can be, we have to evaluate. Would you recommend like software analysis, imaging and all? I think it's something that can definitely be utilized, um, but I do think that there is still going to be a role for the clinicians performing the VASI themselves, um, just because I think the image J analysis, if you're doing that for the, you know, for all of the photographs for all patients, might be a bit cumbersome. Um, and then, you know, I, I think it is helpful to sometimes have information real time when you're actually in with the patient, as opposed to just, you know, doing everything using software analysis. But certainly, as software becomes more sophisticated and it becomes easier, that is something um, that could be considered. Yes, my um, question is, um, uh, does this system apply to confettis and the hypochromic borders and the um, to be copners that, how, how are you going to apply these systems um, when it's like confetti is like spreading everywhere? Yeah. Um, do you use your palms or? I think, you know, when you have a large body surface area with multiple confetti lesions, probably using the hand unit um, is going to be better to, than to try to take a fingertip unit and, you know, measure all of those areas, but I think it will just be taking a, fi a hand unit, saying like, okay, there's 50% of this hand unit is it has confetti lesions, and then kind of calculating it that way. And for hypochromic voters, um, do you use your woods like to actually determine the, the areas and do you count it as part of the uh, VASI? Yes, yeah, so in our study actually, um, because we had patients across all skin types, when people did have lighter skin tones or if there was a concern that there might be, you know, we might not be accurately gaining the degree of depigmentation just visually, we actually did take photos with wood slam, um, which was helpful. I don't think that we had any patients who had hypochromic vitiligo, um, but I think we would include that in the VASI yeah, like scoring. Like the, the pendochrome lesions, you calculate it into the VASI. Yes. And yes. the type 2B copner, how to apply it with the fingertip units and... Percentage. Sorry, can you repeat the last part of that? Um, the 2B copner, the one that strikes like, you know, um, after scratching, it's very tiny. Oh, copnerization. Yeah, copnerization. Yes. Yeah, so uh, essentially if there's depigmentation or if we think there's an area of active vitiligo, that would be counted. Yeah. Thank you for the excellent uh, study. And uh, I just wanted to ask you that the image J software is a distinct software, and the software that you use to scale the photographs compared to the fingertip unit of the patient is different, right? Uh, or so is it the same? It was all done using image J. It was all done, all right. And the second question is that, um, did you compare uh, using the software and the photographs to, rate, to, you know, to score the body surface area versus the clinical examination alone in the clinic? So we actually did not use any clinical examination. Um, this was done during the you know, COVID pandemic, so it was a good time to kind of transition to doing everything remotely. Um, but I think that's kind of the next step where we would want to compare 
um, you know, because photos are two-dimensional, whereas when you're in with a patient, it's very three-dimensional. So I think the next step moving forward would be to compare ratings done through imaging versus when you're actually in person. Exactly. And the other advantage of doing it in person is that it will probably take less time because, you know, looking at each and every photograph versus you know, trying to do it on the patient itself might be less time consuming. So how, how much time did it take for you to assess the, the VASI score when you were using images? So I think it's very dependent on the degree of body surface yes. area that each person has. I think, you know, even in person, if you have someone with just a few lesions, you can do a VASI scoring very quickly, whereas um, if you have a very large body surface area extent or you know multiple small lesions that takes much longer but i think the nice thing about the images is that you know and if you're an experienced rater you can go through things very quickly but if you're um, you know a novice rater it's much more difficult so i think the nice thing about the images is that it breaks down all of the um, all the body sites into very manageable images and then you can kind of just take the scaled um, fingertip unit, hand unit, whatever unit you're using and just directly apply. So I think that does kind of speed up the process a little bit. And I think it's also useful for training people because you know, you don't always need a live patient to train a person. And, exactly, you know, exactly. Yeah. So that's why we proposed kind of having a set of standardized images that everyone can kind of practice using the FASI scoring off of and then also comparing to image J to determine accuracy. So in this study, we only did image J analysis of the hands okay. to compare that to the, the radar um, scoring oh, okay. of the hands. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for a great talk and wonderful discussion. Uh, 